Bismillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala rasulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, today is day three, and on day three we have talked a lot about publishing and the publishing side. Um, we've heard about self-publishing, we've looked at independent publishers, but we also know that the relationship between a publisher and an author is really important. And so today, in this session, we have a very special guest the editor of Daybreak Press, editorial director, should I say, of Daybreak Press, mashallah, from the US, teaching us how to become your publisher's favorite author. Sister Najia, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks for inviting me. I'm so excited to be here and make great relationships between all of us writers and publishers. Yes, inshallah. So I know that, uh, I know your colleague, the sister Tamara Gray, she's uh, indicated to me that sometimes authors can be a bit of a pain. Is that true? <laughs> it's true. I'm sure that authors believe the, uh, the opposite of that as well. And I think that those tensions can definitely be improved upon. I think there are several ways that authors, both authors and publishers, because I'm going to hit both sides of this coin. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> there, are both, okay. there are ways that we can kind of eliminate those tensions and, uh, and uh, alleviate the pain. Fantastic, mashallah. Sis, take it away. All right, so uh, I am going to begin, I'm going to go kind of chronologically through the process of submitting your manuscript. And uh, we'll hit, I'll hit about 10 or so major uh, milestones along that way where tensions can crop up and give you some ways to kind of uh, head those off at the path. We'll do author's perspective first, or I mean publisher's perspective, uh, how to be a great author for your publisher. And then we'll do a little bit about being a great publisher for your authors. Um, because I know that we do have some people who have registered who are publishers, so, and who people have lots also who are self-publishing. And even if you're self-publishing, some of this information might be helpful to you because it deals with the things that, you know, even internally you'll have to address. Um, okay, so the first thing that you need to know before you submit to a publisher is what you really want. You need to have clear ideas of what you envision for your book. Because, for example, if you envision a book that's going to be available next month, traditional publishing is not probably the way that you want to go. We say that traditional publishing is not slow, it's glacial. A lot of times <laughs> authors become really frustrated, especially now it feels more glacial. Like when I first published my, my book, it was pretty much like expected. It was par for the course that it would take 18 months or longer. Whereas now with so many options and the democratization of being able to publish and that great opportunity for people to get their work out there, uh, traditional publishing feels very much slower. So remember those kind of, I know that you've talked about the different methods and the different ways, hybrid publishing and uh, self-publishing and, and traditional. So remember that while you're considering which way is best for you, that time frame is something to consider. And also don't let the time frame intimidate you. If you really feel like you want the, uh, that relationship, that help, that whatever it is that makes you feel like you have more check marks in the pro column for, um, for traditional publishing, don't let the time frame intimidate you because, um, that those advantages might outweigh the fact that it'll be a little bit slow. I say a little bit slow. <laughs> um, so that's, that's the first one point is know exactly what you want. And we'll get to a little bit of flexibility in what you want later. So dun -na -na, foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're actually sitting down to do your submissions and you open your computer, you, the first place you want to go is not submission guidelines. The first place you want to go is what else have they published? You want to know what kind of publisher you're submitting to. You want to look at maybe even like, you know, read the synopses, maybe look at uh, their mission statement, 
Look at their whole entire website. Like tell yourself, you don't get to go to the submission guidelines until you have completely done your homework on this entire uh, publishing house. Then you can reward yourself with going to the submission guidelines if they match your book. Um, Daybreak Press is a press that is very women-centric and very, uh, and Muslim. And we, I've gotten manuscripts from male non-Muslims uh, mm-hmm. about books, you know, for like how to change the oil in your car or random, you know, like, just, hello, <laughs> are you just spamming the whole publishing community? <laughs> <laughs> that wastes your time and the publisher's time. So make sure that the, p- the person that you're talking to wants to hear from you mm. before you submit that, that query or that manuscript. Mm. Um, then also what you want to do is make sure that when you submit, you submit whatever exactly what they say. Um, submission guidelines often, like usually as a gr- general rule of thumb, nonfiction requires a query letter and maybe a a couple of chapters and fiction doesn't necessarily require a query letter, but we do at Daybreak Press. Um, So, and your, your cover letter, even if you just submit a manuscript, you consider your cut, you can consider your cover letter for that as, um, as a query, as a query letter. So that query letter is not a drudgery. It's not something that you just have to get through. It's not something that uh, you can take lightly. It's a golden opportunity. Your query letter is a golden opportunity to build that relationship with your publisher from that moment. If you write a query letter that is personable and comprehensive and tells the publisher why the world needs this book and how it fulfills their mission and does it in a, in a very open and friendly way, that will get your manuscript, not your manuscript, well, your manuscript or your chapters read. That will get you to the next step, whatever the next step is. If you write a query letter that just says, attached, please find my manuscript. Eh, I mean, they might look at the manuscript, but they're not turned on and they're not, you know, they're not uh, feeling you at all. <laughs> uh, and if you write a query letter, which I received some of these kind of query letters as well, that says, you know, I wrote this Uh, I got the idea for this when I was blah, 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 and it took me five years to write this, and it's my dream to be an author, blah, blah, blah. That is telling the publisher what they can do for you Mm -hmm. and what uh, the world can do for you by reading your book. It's not telling them what your book can do for the world. So what you have to think of your book as a service. Your book is going out into the world to fulfill a need and you have to like draw the, the publisher's attention to what that need is and how your book is an awesome way to fit it. Mm-hmm. Um, the third step, polish your manuscript. Mm-hmm. Polish, polish, polish. By which I do not mean you polish your manuscript. I mean you polish your manuscript until you think it's shiny and then you give it to someone else to edit. There's a cardinal rule in writing, which is that you really can't edit your own work. And that goes for me, a professional editor. Mm, Wow. Wow. You can't edit your own work. Why? Because when you read your own work, you see what you meant. Mm -hmm. You just gloss, you, you, it's so easy to gloss over mistakes because, or, or, you know, like typos or misplaced words or whatever the situation may be, you miss them. Because you see in your, but with your eye, what your mind meant to write. Yeah. So uh, make sure that you get someone else to give it a good go over. It doesn't have to be a professional. It would be nice if you could get a professional. But if you're not in a position to be able to do that, like in my first book, I wasn't. Um, get somebody that you know is um, good with the old keyboard and the English language to, to go over it for you and give it a good once over. Um, at least for proofreading, you know, like they don't, you don't have to have somebody, you know, like do content editing or anything like that, of course, but for proofreading, you need to have a good proofreader. Um, make sure that you have enough beta readers. So you send it to enough people that they can catch congruency mistakes and things like that. For example, when I wrote Sophia's journal, I sent it to several 
people and a couple of them gave me very good like oh for example there's a dog in the first scene and then he never comes back mm. you know like the, the family has a dog but then the dog never shows up again or the, the timing is xyz one of them was 12 years old wow and she told me listen you have a timing mistake uh, in in you know in this part blah 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 and i was like yellow teeth no none of the grown-ups picked it up wow so have a diverse group of beta readers and uh and take their take their advice to heart you don't have to take all of it but respect their opinions yes yes um if a publisher receives okay if a publisher reads your first chapter and it's full of all kinds of mechanical errors, they may not read any further because they can see not only the level of writing, but also they can see the amount of time it's going to take for that. They can see you where know? this is going. Yeah. <laughs> they can see where this is going. <laughs> and if a publisher likes your story, but, but it does need a lot of mechanics work, they may go ahead and, you know, and take you on but it is going to take a lot of extra time. So just kind of keep that in mind and get, it's like, it's like labor. Like you want to do as much of your labor at home as you can, if you're having a hospital birth before you go to the hospital. So you don't have to, uh, you know, suffer through all of that uh, stuff that you could have done at home there where you're tied to a bed and you're on a monitor and you're telling, having to people tell you what you can do and you can't eat and you blah, 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 whatever. Right? So it's much easier to labor at home. It's much easier to polish your manuscript before you send it. Uh, that doesn't mean there won't be polishes later, but you know, do your best. Just as a caveat, you know, just in case you thought that it was perfect, just remember <laughs> yeah. it's important. Because people get, they take it personally, don't they? When the editor yes. comes back with something, so, I've done everything, like it's polished. Why are you telling me there's more stuff? But yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed. Alhamdulillah, at Daybreak Press, we have been so blessed to work with so many wonderful authors who are open, completely open to, uh, you know, to those kind of, um, you know, flesh this out, change this a little, or, you know, like those kind of content things. Mm -hmm. And then we've had a, a client or two who, like, like you may have, like, yeah. a client or two who, who, who really came to a traditional publisher when they really should have self-published right. because they were emotionally attached to that. It's not bad to be emotionally attached to what you've written, mm -hmm. but if you're really strongly emotionally attached to every comma, you should self-publish because that way you get your way and you don't drive your publisher up a tree. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so you have to look at your book, you know, like people say a lot of times, my book's my baby. But you have to look at your book as, if you want to look at it as your baby, fine. But babies aren't ready to go out into the world when they're born. That's a really good point. Yes. Yeah. yeah right? It's true. Yeah. So, I teach my students, it's not a baby, it's a book. Okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not a baby, it's a book. And right. Realize that it's a book. It can be improved. There will be aspects that need working on, you know, to, to try to have that detachment. The sooner you get that. The, the easier it will be for you to actually bring it to the, the best that it can be because that's what editors are there for, isn't it? To punish, exactly. To bring exactly. out this, your story. The, the sooner you see it as a book, the sooner you become a professional author. Ah, I like that. That's going on Twitter, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, the sooner you see it as a, as, a, as a book, the sooner you can also realize that it's a business. There are aspects to, for example, cover design that your publisher knows because they understand what's selling right now. They understand color scheme. The, they, you know, the professional designer, a designer, which we have a superb one named Rayana Ismail. Uh, <laughs> I do happen to know who that is, by the way. <laughs> Mashallah, that's where I come from. Indeed. Dear, dear Ray, Habib, it's Envy Ray. Oh, sure. Oh. She served us all well. Bless her heart. She's just so awesome. She is so uh, But uh, she, she knows what she's doing. And to, to, you know, if you have a specific cover design that just, and then the publisher tells you, for example, it just doesn't work for X, Y, or Z reason, you have to be open to that because you have to remember that it's a business and they have more experience in knowing 
what will sell. The goal is to sell the book. If the goal is for you to love the book, then make it a diary. If the goal is to sell the book, um, you know, be flexible in these, uh, in these kind of things. And remember that most contracts will say um, that the publisher has final uh, artistic uh, control over those things as well. So, um, so remember, if you're using a traditional publisher, you're entering, you're entering into a realm where just like you go to the doctor, you wouldn't tell the doctor how to do his exam. You, know, you don't, tell, you don't uh, fight to the teeth. And I have personal experience in this because my first book, uh, Sophia's Journal, the publisher wanted to, wanted to change the title. And she eventually got her way, even though I fought. And you can fight. I'm not saying don't fight. I'm not saying don't like really hash it out. That's part of a good relationship is the ability to be able to hash these things out without hurt feelings. But, um, but I did eventually give in and uh, I eventually have the title that she wanted. And the reason she wanted the title that she wanted was so that young readers would know immediately that it was a time travel adventure. So the book, the, the title that she wanted was Sophia's Journal, colon, Time Warp, 1857. Mm -hmm. And so in the first edition, it had that title. And later when, uh, when uh, I got the rights back and, we, and, I re and it was republished, um, I took that part off. I, I went ahead and took that part off. So there can be, there can be give and take in these things, but remember that what the publisher is giving is more than is more experience than you have. So just saying like that. Um, the next one is okay. Are you ready for this? Hmm. Everybody, sit down. Because <laughs> this one is come with an audience. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> Y'all heard me say it, right? Y'all heard me say it. Okay. 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 Yes, sir. Bring it. <laughs> I've been telling my people this. It's like they don't believe me. Carry on. Come on, bring it. Yeah, yeah. Here it comes. Here it comes. Come with your own audience. And this is something that I did not do when I was, uh, you know, when I, when I had my first book. None and of us did. None of us did. Yeah, we none of us know did. Anything about that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And some of us have done a much better job of cultivating an audience in the interim. Like you've done a much better job than I have. I will say right now I'm weak. Uh, I'm weak in this department and I'm, and I'm, I'm trying to up my game because I know that it's important. I know that it's important. Yeah. Uh, if you are familiar with the Salafi feminist, Zainab uh, Bint Yunus, yes. uh, we're publishing a book for her this coming year. Yes. And one of the big selling books, uh, selling points, and it's an awesome book. About, you guys are going to love it. It's about the history of Muslim women. I and, know. And, it was and learning from them, book. right? Mashallah. Yes, we worked with her on it. Yep. I cannot tell you. What, big, uh, what a big selling point it was that she already, like we knew her. Yeah. We knew her. She didn't come to us as Joe Blow off the street. Yeah. She came to us as somebody that we knew on social, from social media and who already had an audience on social media. And it really, really helps. Uh, it really helps you and it helps, the, it helps the publisher. This is a win-win game changer if you already have an audience. So yeah. when you're thinking, I want to become a writer, I'm writing a book. Don't think I'm writing a book, tunnel vision book. Yes. Think I'm writing a book. I'm creating myself. I'm creating a brand. Yes. I'm creating yes. my own. Ayani, I'm creating my own a brand. I'm creating a brand. Yes. So people are not going to say, oh, necessarily, I want to read blah, blah, whatever book. They're going to say, oh, so-and-so has a book out. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I have to read her book. She's yeah, yeah. cool on social media. I love her Insta. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how you sell your book. Yeah. That's how you sell your book. Everything is social media. You know, like in the old days when it was the big five uh, publishers, they would put, they would pour money into marketing campaigns mm -hmm. for, um, for their authors, especially their big authors. And they would, you know, send you on book tours and they would do billboards and they would blah, blah, magazines and yada, yada, yada. Habubati, even they don't do that anymore. Yeah. Unless you're Stephen except King. Except for the A-list, yeah. Except for the yeah. A -list authors, yeah. yeah. 
Exactly. They do not do that. Mm -hmm. So don't sit there and think, oh, I went with this little indie publisher and they're not, you know, like, no, no, they they don't do as much Mm marketing. Even the big houses don't do that anymore. And the reason, because everything is democratized, there's social media, there's, you know, like you have so many avenues, opportunities, yeah. not responsibilities and the grudges, I mean, things, the burdens that you have to bear, opportunities. You have so many opportunities to market your book. Yeah. And the way you do that is set yourself up before you even send your book to the publisher. Hey, Ideally, nothing. before you write word one. Thank you. I think that it's. I, I think I'm really excited about this. This whole this this whole um, group of sessions actually all to do with you know working with publishers and marketing etc. Because I think that this is information that we didn't have. You know, nobody told us yeah. about the whole the whole author journey or the writer's journey. Because I like to see it as sort of phase one and phase two. So phase one yeah. is the creative process, and phase two is about finding that audience. It's about marketing. It's about selling. It's about building your brand it's about earning the love and trust and loyalty of the people who will eventually read your book so i'm so excited i'm so excited i think people are hearing stuff all of you who are out there this information is literally stuff that even some of us who've been in the industry for years are only clocking onto now so if you get this information and you implement the things that we're telling you and take the time out to build what we're telling you to build, inshallah, it's going to, you're going to see the effects of it uh, in the rest of your yeah. career, inshallah. I believe that. Jazakallah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You'll be entering at, you know, you'll, you'll be entering at the halfway point. You know, like you, 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 you just can't imagine how much it saves you and how much. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, when we were coming up, there just wasn't anywhere to get this information. So this is like a treasure. Uh, you know, not, not like I'm bragging on my own self, but like to, uh, when I was coming up, what I wouldn't have given for somebody to tell us these ins and outs and these little, these little business side things, you know, and to tell us that once the book is written, the work begins. <laughs> yes. It's like, oh, I'm done. Yay. That's it. <laughs> Preach. Preach. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. Carry on. <laughs> Uh, okay, so okay, so once you've like signed on and you have a uh, and you have chosen a publisher or a publisher has uh, found you chosen you and found you like a great match, which by the way, I want to throw something in here, and that is that if eight hundred and fifty thousand publishers reject you, don't even take it personally don't take it don't even say my book is not worth it uh it's it's because my book isn't good enough it's because whatever blah 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 i'm gonna tell you as a publisher i have rejected books that i loved that i was dedicated to seeing them published like i these this the world needs this book it's important it's well written it's whatever but it did not fit in my publishing calendar my calendar for that space of time was already filled or it didn't fit with our mission or it didn't fit with whatever was going on at the time. There are so many other businessy variables that are sitting on your head as a publisher that cause you to have to reject books for your company. That doesn't mean that you're rejecting the book as a piece of art or as a piece of work. Don't like even uh, JK Rowling's Harry Potter was rejected 27 times. So it has nothing to do with the quality of your book if, if you get rejected. I mean, it can, but not necessarily. If you've got a good polished work and you, you know, you've done your, crossed your T's and dotted your I's, keep going, keep going. Because as a publisher, it's broken my heart to reject some of the books I've had to reject mm-hmm. because of business, uh, <clears throat> you know, considerations. Yeah. Remember that it costs an exorbitant amount of money to, to publish a book. And so only so many can be published in a given publishing year. So if they are, if like for my situation, like I've had, I just the other day, I had a good one, really good one come in, but we already had a book in that genre for this publishing year. Mm-hmm. So just be aware that those are the kind of things that publishers are considering. Publishers are not sitting on high going, I judge this book to suck. <laughs> I'm going to reject it. You know? <laughs> 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 uh, 
they, they, they're not saying, you know, they're not sitting on high judging. They really, really, they really aren't. They're just, uh, you know, and if, if you get like several rejections, ask for feedback, ask for feedback. If they don't provide it in the rejection letter, which I always do, but if they don't ask for, ask for feedback, you know, was it something in, internal or it, it, do you have any idea how I can improve? Don't expect that they may have read the entire manuscript, but if say you sent the first three chapters and they read, or they'll tell you how much they read and just say, you know, the, what's the worst they can do? You know, just not reply. <laughs> Big deal. Yeah. 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 Then you just keep going, plug on to the next. Okay. So the next uh, wonderful piece of advice I have is, Please, please, please communicate in the method that your publisher prefers. Don't say, I can't get WhatsApp, or I don't do email, or I whatever. You know, um, <clears throat> if your publisher prefers, like we operate almost entirely on WhatsApp, and it's extremely difficult for me to deal with, um, we have one we have one author. I have uh, had an experience with an author a while back, like, you know, a couple years ago, who wouldn't communicate on WhatsApp and then also complained because I didn't answer her emails right away. Oh, right. So I'm like, I, I don't operate best by email. I only check my email once a day. So you want, if you want an immediate response, you have to communicate the way I prefer to communicate. So um, whatever your, your publisher prefers, that's the way that you're going to get their attention. That's the way that you're going to engage them and get their responses. Um, you know, so it's really important to be flexible about that. Um, <clears throat> the next, so now we're entering phase two, which is, okay, now the work on the actual manuscript begins with the, with the publisher. My first um, plea is, enjoy the marketing enjoy it make it creative make it your make it a part of your baby you know like this is your baby in high school <laughs> you know like you have to you, you don't uh, have those little sweet oh you don't have those little sweet hugs anymore and you have to drive them to uh, gymnastics and drive them to this and that and i don't know what and the role changes but you still have that relationship, that core relationship. So enjoy the marketing. It's just another phase. Don't think of it as like, ha, huh, I wrote my book, my creative uh, process is over, and now I have to do this drudgery and stupid business side that I hate and blah, blah, blah. Change your perspective. Change your perspective into seeing marketing as something that's relationship building and uh, creative. And that way, you and your uh, you and your publisher both will have will be embarking on a successful, fun uh, phase of work, rather than you know like trying to pull teeth. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we already talked about uh, thinking of yourself as a brand and building uh, building your name. So building your name, guys. Uh, is not just your social media presence, which is kind of what I meant before when I was talking about it, you know, build your name, have a good social media presence. It also means um, write articles, uh, join, other, uh, join other people in their endeavors, join the writing community, um, be, be a literary, a citizen of the literary world. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so that people, you can help others uh, public, you know, promote their work and they can help you promote your work and you have a place to go when you need help with something. And, you know, being a part of that world is the camaraderie that you miss as a, as an author when you're sitting just behind the keyboard by yourself. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it also, uh, it also helps you to have like, for example, a blog or, you know, any kind of way that you can participate in writing. It may be doing book reviews. It may be, uh, you know, writing articles for Muslim Matters or a, another outlet. It may be um, blogging, whatever. But especially the blogging community, they also have a really good community, sense of community. They do blog tours where they link to each other's blogs. They interview each other. They promote each other really, really well. Mm -hmm. So, and your blog doesn't even have to be about your book or about writing. It can be about something totally different. Like you could be, for example, somebody who likes to do crochet and knitting and you have a blog about that, A, you're getting writing experience 
And B, you have plugged yourself into a brand new audience for your book mm -hmm. that wouldn't necessarily normally hear about it. Mm -hmm. So even if you have another interest, blog about that interest. And then when your book comes out, you'll be like, yo, crocheters, uh, I wrote a book, check it out. And you have like a whole new universe open to you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So keep yourself out there and join hands with your sisters. Um, okay. So, uh, when, <clears throat> when it also comes to marketing, these, the, the, these kind of blog tours and things like that, uh, also presentations, school visits, those kind of things, those are going to be not just, not just, okay. Let me correct my verbiage. They will be necessary mm -hmm. and expected of you from your publisher, mm -hmm. and they will be golden opportunities to connect your book to people. But nobody wants to hear you come in and read two pages and then sign your book and sell your book. <laughs> That's like so 1940s. <laughs> um, it's you have to offer something to them of value yes yeah something of value like value added yeah mm. you have to you have to interact with them in a genuine way yeah so like for example taiba she has her book blessed bananas mm. and it's a children's story book and when she goes to schools she doesn't just go look i'm going to read my book Yay! she has a puppet show and she does her puppet show and she interacts with the teachers and the students in a way that really enamors them to the book and gets and lets her. them get to know her right as a person yeah. right and that's invaluable for kids coming up too that they know an author yes especially with uh i'm gonna say it especially with all the stem emphasis the humanities are getting left behind so we wow. got to get steam we got to get steam not stem <laughs> because we're we're raising a generation that doesn't know history doesn't know mm. um you know doesn't have a creative a bent doesn't have that ability to connect on a human level okay yeah enough soapbox okay so <laughs> <laughs> anyway it's important for kids for the audience and it's important for you that you give them something that they need yeah. so uh say that you have a book that's for that's for students you could offer along with it a writing workshop which is what i do yeah. or you could write offer and taiba does those as well you can offer along with it training for teachers Yes. Uh, what I like to do with Sophia's Journal, this has been my dream and I'm just now uh, in a position where I can start to make that dream happen next year, is to offer, uh, you know, like Sophia's Journal as, you know, like an author visit, but also do a teacher training about teaching Islam in the public schools. Nice. Mm. So, uh, so there are all kinds of different ways. Just think about what your, what is the subject of your book and what interests you? And it's not just for schools. You need to do that even if you go to a university or even if you go to another venue. Sometimes a bookstore, they'll be okay with a reading, although even they would appreciate something else. Yeah, so yeah, do what you can and make sure that you kind of tailor each one to whatever the, to, to whatever the audience is. You know, yeah. um, Make sure that you ask ahead of time you know, will there be youth in the audience? Will there be kids in the audience? What's your usual number of audience? You know, so that you kind of, pardon me, so that you can, you can really fulfill your role as not just somebody who has a book, but somebody who's a role model and somebody who has somebody who can help them with something they need help with. Yeah. Um, also remember that your publisher has spent lots of time and tons of money on publishing your book. And so marketing is a part of that bargain. If you self-publish, of course, you know, you have to market yourself, but if, but if you publish with a traditional pub press, especially a small indie press, and especially even a big house, if you're a small, you know, like a, a, an emerging writer, you need to understand that that is, that's an amani. That's a commitment. And that's another thing that I didn't understand when I first published. Because when I first published, I lived in Syria and there was hardly any internet. And there was, you know, in, especially in Syria, there was like legit hardly any, <laughs> any internet. And so I missed that train. And my publisher was frustrated with me. 
and express that frustration because like then I went back to the States and I still was like, uh, I don't know what to do, you know, because there was no information. So um, now I'm seeing that from the other side as the publisher mm -hmm. and I'm doing my best as a publisher to help with that and to provide ideas and to provide, you know, um, but just remember that if you sign on with a publisher, that doesn't mean, yay, I've signed somebody to do a service for me. That's not what that means. It means, yay, I've signed up and created a partnership in work. So, yeah, so just remember, uh, just remember that. And um, my, my sincerest, sincerest apologies to my dad, Linda Delgado of Muslim Writers Publishing for, uh, for not being able to carry my end of the bargain marketing wise in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so now let's flip it and see a couple of things that publishers can do and things that you can request or expect, expect and if you don't get request from your publisher, uh, if you're an author that's just signed on with someone. The first one is good communication and updates. And um, I will be the first to admit that in the early years of, of Daybreak, uh, we, we, were so, we were so frantically learning the ropes and so um, on such tight deadlines that updates did, were not forthcoming in the way that they should have been. But we are absolutely dedicated now to, we, you know, to that. It's so, 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 so important. You know, like if you think of your book as your baby or even your book, you just, you don't want it to just be out there in the ether somewhere and you don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So updates and good communication. Um, number two is collaboration on things that are important to you. So if there is a specific uh, concept for cover or title or, passage in the book or whatever expect collaboration it's not a publisher dictatorship but uh it's, you have to have that mature you have to have that back and forth um your publisher may ultimately insist but at least you should feel 100 percent comfortable to bring any topic to your publisher whatsoever any any question any request any anything <clears throat> you know it should be it should be a a mutual you have a mutual goal. You should be working together side by side to reach that goal. Um, and the third one is what we are first, what we are getting nowadays. And actually, I want to put in here that that part about my title, um, because there really wasn't any back and forth about that. It was, you know, it was like, this is, we have to have this, period. And, um, and I, you know, like to this day, I think that that did a disservice. Does that mean I'm ungrateful to the publisher? Oh my goodness, no. You know, she took that on, she took the project, she saw the value in the book, she, oh, did, she did all of that work. Of course, we had this one disagreement and that, that's okay. That doesn't have to ruin the relationship. That, you know, like I don't hate her, I just hate that title. <laughs> right, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so the third thing that we're provide that we're beginning to provide now and that I'm so I, I feel so blessed to be able to provide this. And Tayyaba is working closely with us on this. She's heading up this project or this part of the project. Um, is author coaching. I, I'm so I feel so blessed to be a publisher that will offer author coaching for marketing because mm -hmm. as far as I know no one else does. And if there are, there, there are very few because like I know authors who have had personal experiences with other publishers and they get like the book is published the end. Wow. Yeah. Like, yeah, there are some people that are in the business just to publish that book and then, you know, all the rest of it is on you. So uh, make sure that you talk to your publisher about that going in as well. That's a good one really important. I know it kind of slid in here as like an afterthought, but it's really important. So don't let it slide by your brains, y'all. Write it down. Uh, make sure that your pub, what your publisher, look at your contract, read your contract, read your contract, read your contract, read your contract, <laughs> <laughs> read your contract, find out what is your publisher willing to commit to the marketing and what do they expect from you from the, for, you know, in the marketing department. Um, alhamdulillah, we're, we're going to have a WhatsApp thread with all of our, all of our authors and we will have one-on-one -on -one contact with our authors to, you know, to give ideas and to work on getting things published 
or, sorry, getting things marketed in the way that's the easiest for the author and the way that gets the most um, promotion going. And um, uh, alhamdulillah, I'm really excited about offering this as part of our service. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I, I really feel that the core of publishing in all of its facets is relationships. Yeah. You, you yeah. don't see that when you have the book in your hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't think about that when you're thinking, I'm going to write a book. But that's what it is. It's mm -hmm. all about your relationship with your publisher, your relationship with your readers, your relationship with your, uh, your sister writers, and the whole community, of li the whole literary community. Men, men, girl, men, women. Oh my God, did you see what I just did? <laughs> Not men. Said <laughs> girls. Men and men girls. girls. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> not in your community remember you only publish books by women yes our community well, we only publish books by women yes. but i mean you but that doesn't mean you don't have to be a member of that larger literary community of course, of course. that includes men and includes yeah, yeah. secular publishers yes. you know go to uh, go to conferences yeah go to you know meet mingle with the people don't sit on a you know on a throne and say well those are non-muslims or those are men or those are whatever yeah yeah no no be a part of that community because that's where that's where a lot of the dawah comes in hmm. your your dawah as a writer is not just the book that you put out it's also all of the interactions that you have with uh non-muslim and muslim writers out there you're you're carrying that message of muslim at muslims as creative normal um uh, contributing members of society who are fun and love their work and are supportive of others so so there you go so keep up your relationships on all fronts starting with before you write word one and if you're already written no it's not too late ladies and gentlemen and ladies ladies <laughs> ladies I I, I, my for, my book was first published in 2008 and I'm I've been spending my interim time publishing others books and this year I'm dedicated to getting another book out and getting my 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 social media and my uh, articles and my enter contest oh yeah don't forget enter contest too enter contest ask your publisher to enter your book into contests and ask you and and yourself enter into like essay contests or whatever mm -hmm. i'm doing one for talking writing right now you guys talking writing is having a they're a, a literary journal and they're having an essay contest about home the theme is home and wow. the deadline isn't until october so jump on it we'll put the link in the description inshallah definitely yeah definitely yeah well i just think that it's been so so beneficial for us to get the the other side of the story if you like you know especially from a more traditional publisher um, and a lot of what you mentioned, you know, mashallah, you know, some things have been mentioned, some things are going to be new to people, uh, but I totally like, I'm, I'm with you and I'm just like co-signing on every point, <laughs> um, especially about the collaborating, especially about the platform building, um, especially about the not seeing your book as a baby. Like I'm just with you girl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have links for Daybreak Press uh, in the description of this talk uh, and any other goodies. I'm sure you've got more goodies for our listeners. So those links will be there. Your bio will be there. Uh, and, I, and I think I have to remind all the listeners that when you do go and follow that link to the Daybreak Press website, remember, you are not allowed to go to the submission guidelines. You have to go through the whole website to see what kind of books they're publishing, who are they publishing? What kind of topics do they seem to be interested in? What do they say about themselves before you go to check out the submission guidelines, inshallah? Amen. Alhamdulillah. Sister Najia, it's been an absolute pleasure. Jazakallah kullu khair for joining us and teaching us and preaching to us. I'm so <laughs> glad we're able to do this, mashallah. And here's to many, many more collaborations, bi'ibnillah, across all fronts, inshallah ta'ala, for the sake of Allah, bi'ibnillah. I mean, I mean to that and the Jazakallah khair wa yaki both. I really, really appreciate everything that you do, Naima. I follow you closely on your wonderful platform that you created. <laughs> and I, uh, I really, I really appreciate the services and support that you're providing for writers. And I'm so happy to be a part of this. Alhamdulillah. May Allah accept all our efforts. Jazakallah kullu khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.